Ladies and gentlemen, what is the passion in your life? We all have different passions. Maybe some of you have the dream to become a famous artist. Maybe some of you want to be a surgeon, fighting COVID and other diseases to save lives. Maybe others of you share the same small goal as Mr. Wang Jielin to earn a hundred million RMB SSR. However, my passion is. May seem conventional or even strange to some of you. It is the illumination of the mysterious universe, the heavenly bodies. When I was a child, I was intrigued by the famous drawing "Starry Night" by Van Gogh. Why are the stars up in the sky? What are stars made of? And can I touch a star? Those questions. Though simple and even foolish, let me down the journey of exploration, the journey to reach the distant illuminations in the sky. I got my first telescope as a birthday present from my parents when I was ten. With this help, I start to gaze into starry night. Sometimes I wonder, is the light ray? An illumination from the fancy city on the other side of the Milky Way. Is that city a concrete jungle just like Shenzhen? Where is it even more high tech, just like those in the Star Wars? Since then, studying the shiny sparks on the dark canopy of the universe has become my dream. I'm very lucky to have very supportive parents. They borrowed many books from the library and allowed me to read for a whole afternoon without raising my head up. I read all the books I could find on this subject and brought up the topic whenever I could. In junior high school, I finally got my chance. I wrote about my conjecture of the black hole and all of the guessed formulas for the space-time variation and distortion in the even horizon of the black hole. Sounds like a pro, huh? Actually, it was rather simple. Cause I was just an amateur. Actually, I don't even know how to write an academic essay at that time. I just hand this piece of paper to my Chinese teacher. As the weekend writing practice, and he just gave me a one-word comment. Let's take a guess what he wrote. Anyone? Excellent. Excellent. Yep. Very good. Feel all right. So because I am an amateur, so maybe he gave me rewrite. Maybe unqualified. What if the essay is just okay? So he just gave me a pass, and. What if he really likes it? So he gave me an excellent. No, none of these. Actually, it's genius. <laughs> Although I wasn't a real genius at that time writing this amateur essay, but that gave me a lot of encouragement. Here on the stage of TEDx. Please allow me to say thank you to my dearest Chinese teacher, Mr. Zhang Dewu. Thank you for encouraging a student to pursue his dream fearlessly. Um, sometimes, the astrophysics can feel definitely out of this world, and even abstract to some people. But astrophysics, to me, is beautiful, appealing, and even addictive. It is a passion of my life, and it is the guiding star on my way forward. At first, like many others else did, I found it was hard to get a handle on astrophysics. There are so many definitions. Some of those, just like the moon and the Earth, 
are familiar to us, but most of them we have never seen before. This star on the picture is Rigel. It is located in Orion. I bet most of you have never heard of it before, but actually it is 130,000 times brighter than the sun. Wow, so impressive. I have never known there's a star so bright in the universe. Not to mention the 50 all-day stars in the various constellations. They are very bright, just like the Rigel. Studying the various constellations, their stars, and their planets makes me feel closer to the truth of the universe. Getting to know how is the light out of our planet and the solar system is just like a frog jumping out of the well and seeing the vast ocean for the first time. And there are a lot of magic moments that patterns and observations seem too perfect to be true. How can some planets just go in such a perfectly calculated oval? How can the gravitational force just enough to hold the solar system together and drive it round and round for billions of years? All of these coincidences seem so impressive yet reasonable, so much so that I wish astronomy was a subject in primary school. Here are two pictures. Let's guess what it is. I'll give you a hint. One is of the larger scale and the other is of the smallest. Anyone guess what is this? Solar system? Okay. Adam? Right. You are so clever. Actually, one of it is the solar system and the other, the carbon atom structure. Isn't that an amazing coincidence? They are so similar. They are small, small spheres orbiting a large sphere, right? Was God feeling lazy, so he reused his own design blueprint? Sometimes I'm lost in the thought of space and time. Just imagine when you take a look at a star tonight. It's maybe a planet 20,000 light years away. The image travels at the speed of light. So, what we see probably comes from 20,000 years ago. 20,000 years! We only took 2,000 years to go from Jesus to Christ, uh, Jesus to Jobs. And if we see an ape just smashing walnuts on the planet on 20,000 light years away, we might expect the highly developed if civilization exists on that planet. At the same time, if someone in that civilization is looking back on us, they were only able to see our primitive ancestors. Now, let's have a piece of music together, shall we? Someone please tell me what you heard. Maybe this sir in green. Do you know? Classics, right? And any other answers? Crying. Crying? Yep. Okay. Good. So I bet most of you maybe heard a small part of babies crying and some Western music and as as that madam say a piece of Chinese music, right? These music were encrypted on the gold record sent to the space by Voyage 1 of NASA in 1977. Maybe after the fifth industrial revolution has started on Earth, aliens finally received this record. They may be able to hear the same sound as you do as you today. But at that time, the Earth is completely different. 
in the vast universe. We Earth communicate with aliens thousands of light years away through this small piece of gold. 10,000 years at a glance, this real romance in the study of the universe. I think most of you have seen this, the Halley's Comet. According to the records, it will appear once approximately every 79 years, which means most of the human beings have only one chance to take a glance in our whole life. If the comet has memory, it will remember Galileo Galilei, and it will remember the people who greeted it in 1986, and also it will remember you and me, who will live to see it in 2061. Time elapsed, but the comet will witness our transient presence, our history, and our future to come. All of these beautiful facts nourish my dream to become an astrophysicist. If you take a close look at the astronomy, as well as the physical theories behind it, I promise you will surely find the seemingly profound subject very approachable. The universe is always generous to share its knowledge as long as you are willing to think, ask, and discover. Thank you.